interesting one in here. The U.S. Uh, involvement is rather, rather uh, uh, strong. Uh, there was an attempt to build a force mainly uh, made up of members of the Ku Klux Klan, uh, together with some other former uh, and active mercenaries uh, who had uh, long involvement in U.S. Special Forces and Army uh, background. And uh, they at first in the, their first idea was to invade Grenada, uh, but then they realized that the Grenadian government probably would be able to to uh, offset their activities and, and probably defeat them, and uh, since their security forces are quite well organized there. And so they uh, changed their plan and, and decided to go into Dominica. The former prime minister, Patrick John, who was very, very closely identified with South Africa, in fact, he had helped to set up a monitoring station and also a, a base for uh, the manufacture of uh, long-range uh, tor torpedoes, which could be built uh, with the help of South Africa, on, uh, in, uh, the, which he helped to set up. Uh, and basically, uh, they had hoped, uh, he had hoped, that if, they, if the coup succeeded and he agreed with the Klan people, that uh, if it su succeeded, that he would give them rights to casinos, to gambling operations, to he would even give them several posts in his cabinet if he came back to power. Uh, well, of course, needless to say, it failed. But uh, see, was there some dopes, um, yes. some narcotics business yes, involved exactly there too? Wasn't also, there? this is as there often is in yeah. these things. This is on page forty-four, by the way. We're getting a little bit ahead of it. Yeah, this is also covered in the same uh, in the same yes. This highlights a point, though, that we've made several times on this show, how the CIA will use anyone to carry through their objectives, the Ku Klux Klan, mercenaries, the mafia, drug operations. It's reasons like this that John Stockwell thinks that the CIA is completely corrupt and immoral operation. Not, not to mention the 800,000 people that have been killed through CIA operations. Right? I think 800,000 is a very, very conservative figure, but yes, yeah. that's, that's uh, correct. Uh, there is clearly a trend today in the CIA to to uh, move more in the direction of contracting out some of the operations that it does not really want to get itself, uh, not that it doesn't want to get involved, but doesn't want to get caught with its pants down right. doing it. And so some of the more sensitive activities they're branching out and letting other either other intelligence services or other quote-unquote private uh, freelance types. It looks like... <coughs> um that they are developing a very significant alliance with the South Africans and the Argentinians. Once again, these are both covered in this uh, edition of the uh, Covert Inf Action Information Bulletin. Angola, the Pretoria's continuing war, talks about the South African involvement there. Mozambique rebels exposed, once again, we find South Africa involved in that. And the CIA in that case. Yeah, and the CIA. And then, we get to an article here about Argentina activates international death squads. And this article shows that these, God, wretched, horrible people in, uh, involved in a tremendous amount of torture and maiming and killing of people in uh, Argentina are now, like I say, they're subcontractees. And not only that, but the U.S. is trying to make a regional type of kind of a NATO. It's called SATO which is a good Sato for Sado, Sado. But anyway, with South Africa taking care of the area in the Indian Ocean and Africa, and Argentina taking care of Central America and South America. In fact, Argentina said they would be glad to come up and help with the El Salvadorian folks, right? That's correct. Uh, Argentina, if there's a country in the world that has perfected the art of torture and the art of making people disappear, it is Argentina. Uh, and thousands upon thousands of Argentinians uh, have have disappeared, and uh, uh, I think that this article demonstrates. And this was an article which we did a lot of research on, and which was the result of a lot of press reports, which came out in some of them in South Africa itself, of the fact that the C that the Argentinians had sent some of their more renowned and best known torturers to South Africa because they ha could no longer uh, be active in Argentina. They were so well known. So they sent them to South Africa as part of the diplomatic corps in the Argentine embassy. And they were specialists uh, in torture. 
Yes, it is, go ahead. It is unclear at this point whether they were advising the South Africans, who also know a good deal about uh, how to torture people and how to, uh, how to make people die in prison, as, to, as they have the highest rate of uh, death of people in, in their prisons. Uh, whether, in fact, they're training each other is unclear, but uh, certainly they have a good deal of, of sh sharing and common interests uh, involved. We showed the movie on company business, which you, or sections of the movie on company business, which you might remember. This movie showed the complicity of the CIA with torture all around the world. As a matter of fact, there are CIA torture schools in the United States. They bring people over here from various uh, countries abroad, police, military, teach them the very sophisticated ways of torture, then they go back and operate on their own folks back home. And just to make sure that everything goes right, the CIA then has their agents, which go down and supervise. They hold clinics, they bring people off the streets and torture them. I mean, it sounds like something which you couldn't even think up out of a sick imagination, but this is what goes on. And uh, next article in your bulletin for March talks about the Salvadorian deserter who uh, disclosed the Green Beret torture role. This was in the news just recently. And it has actually the transcript and a considerable summary of what actually went on. And it showed the Americans supervising and helping out. And they tortured the first person to show that uh, how it should be done. This was a 14-year-old boy. And the next person brought in was a 13-year-old girl. And of course, after raping her, then they let the El Salvadorians try it and uh, make sure they did it right. It, it's a gruesome story, and, and I think this is an example of uh, something that the American people are being asked uh, to overlook or to turn a blind eye to. That is the brutality of the Salvadoran government. It is not a case of uh, Salvadoran, of uh, President Duarte as quote-unquote a moderate person who's trying to stand up to the forces both from left and right. Which the New York uh, Times always says. Exactly. It was, in fact, the New York Times in a story in January who disclosed the first part of the story, which was that the Green Berets, eight of them, were present during a torture session. And it was a major story. Uh, uh, strangely, it was such a major story, but it was on page two of the New York Times rather than on page one. But it was a very big and important story. I would say, however, that uh, uh, one of the reasons, I guess, was that the, the Salvadoran, the member of the Salvadoran army who talked about this, who is now des deserted and who is living in Mexico, uh, he was somewhat intimidated, I guess, by talking to the New York Times, and he's later revealed to the to Mexican media, and that's the transcript in this story, in this article, that the special forces, and I should say the U.S. special forces, was created originally by the CIA. Uh, the special forces were actually involved in the torture, as opposed to standing by observing it. They said they didn't rape the little girl, though. I mean, there is some morality oh, left, yes. right? Lewis, how does this torture and all of these CIA covert operations fit into American foreign policy as a whole? You have a couple articles in your current journal about the role of the CIA in these sorts of operations we're talking about within American foreign policy. Could you focus on that for a minute? Well, I, I guess it comes down to the, the whole uh, doctrine that the United States feels it has to uh, keep its role and its sphere of influence or its spheres of influence. Uh, uh, and part of this is putting governments in power and part of it is keeping them in power. Now, there are many governments with whom the United States has been closely mm -hmm. identified around the country who cannot stay in power without massive repression. Uh, and, uh, of course, El Salvador is one. There are many others around the world in all the three continents. Uh, Argentina and South Africa for two. Absolutely. Obvious uh, South Korea is another example, uh, and the Philippines. Uh, I think uh, we have to understand, though, that uh, what, why would the United States do this? Is it simply to keep somebody who is a friend of the United States in power. Um, successive presidents, and it's not just Reagan, and it's not Carter before him, it's successive presidents since, basically since the 50s, since Eisenhower, have uh, been uh, working hand in glove and even have been on camera embracing 
successive dictators with whom we've been identified. Uh, the most recent example, if you remember, was the case of, uh, of Jimmy Carter embracing the Shah of Iran a few months before he was overthrown on the steps of the White House. Um, I think it's because of the CIA's involvement and, in fact, direction of much of these uh, activities. It's not that the CIA is working uh, on its own, as, as some people suggest, as a rogue elephant. The CIA works directly under the, uh, under the uh, uh, guidance and direction of the chi uh, chief of state, of the president. And, of course, this, this president not only doesn't know, but doesn't want to know every day what the CIA is doing. But the fact of the matter is that, they, that they're doing what the president asked them to do. And the other thing I should just mention quickly is that the CIA carries out these activities to keep the interests of the corporations, U.S. corporations, who have great interests uh, at stake, for example, in South Africa and in all the other countries we've mentioned. That's right. The multinationals value stability above everything else, plus the ability to operate there, keep the economy low as far as wages, and be able to take the riches out of the country. And these right-wing dictatorships let them do that. Of course, there's a point which is reached, that, like in El Salvador, once it gets too far and the people really start and not uh, a revolution, then the multinationals suffer there. And there is a certain level beyond which the U.S., when it becomes publicly <coughs> known, as opposed to known in the country itself, publicly known in the United States, that the U.S. is so closely identified with such a repressive regime as today in El Salvador, uh, that it finally realizes it has to fish or cut bait. It has to decide whether we continue to support this openly or whether we have to find other ways to support, as, in, as for example, Argentina has now offered, uh, we understand, directly to the United States to be a surrogate for the U.S. in, in, in El Salvador. Also, Honduras is, mm -hmm. is playing that role. This is what's so chilling about this Agents Identities Information Act, that it will cover over the possibility of the media exposing the worst abuses of the CIA which will mean the American people won't know what it's doing. We'll have a secret government, and we will therefore increase the power and the scope of operations of the CIA. Whereas in the past, when there has been media and public focus on CIA operations and excesses, there has been pressure to cut back yes. on the CIA. I think, however, the most uh, threatening part of this is the, is the whole uh, move towards greater and greater secrecy and uh, so that the media will not even have the opportunity to report on this whole area. Uh, it will be illegal almost for a, a journalist uh, for one of the major media to write or to report uh, about intelligence. Uh, in many ways it, that will just be beyond the pale now. This also ties in with the progress of Senate Bill 1 in the Senate, or the great-grandson of Senate Bill 1, which is designed to take away a lot of our civil liberties, we're gradually becoming a police state, really, it looks like, doesn't it? Well, I, what can I, be done about it? Uh, well, I don't feel it's uh, fair to uh, be rhetorical about this. I agree that there is a move in towards greater and greater uh, secrecy and greater and greater, uh, or less and less, accountability of the government to the people. And uh, uh, there are, of course, a lot of uh, people who are uh, opposed to this, including uh, quite a few members of Congress. Uh, for example, 29 members of Congress signed a resolution challenging the right of the president to intervene in El Salvador. Under the War Powers Act, uh, he has no right to, to do this, and they're challenging his right. Uh, and that's 29 members out of uh, hundreds, but it is a significant I think, indication that there is, even in the halls of Congress, uh, opposition to his policies. As well as in the country at large. I mean, the overwhelming majority are against Reagan's policy in El Salvador. And I think the uh, uh, recent polls have shown that uh, the p foreign policy in general mm -hmm. is not entirely accepted or mm -hmm. is uh, there is great doubt and great wonderment uh, as to whether there's any continuity whether the policy is thought out, whether it's based on realities or only the uh, very anti-communist rhetoric of this administration. Uh, there are also quite a few uh, people 
high in the administration who uh, have intelligence backgrounds, and uh, this is another indication that the that the uh, intelligence is on the on the rise in, in this administration. Well, this is the final question, and to conclude, what can the American people do against these worst excesses of the CIA and indeed against the threats to all of our civil liberties involved in some of these bills that are being passed that will unleash the CIA? I think the biggest thing is that people can educate themselves as to what is going on, to read their press uh, and to demand to know what is going on from, from the media. Uh, to uh, try and exercise their rights, that is to let their Congress, their member of Congress know that they don't uh, accept whatever the policy may be, uh, even to demonstrate uh, publicly if they're opposed to these activities. I think most of all is to, be, to keep themselves informed and to speak out against it. Well, thank you very much for... And good luck. Enough. And watch, you. watch your way home. There may be somebody following you. Well, I, I believe it's best to, uh, <laughs> to speak out openly and, uh, and not be paranoid. I'm, I'm not uh, willing to resign myself to uh, fear. Okay. Thank you. And that is the second of our three-part series on covert action, the CIA. And now we have a final word from Doug. Here are some of the antics that the moral majority has been up to recently. The head of their Maryland chapter, Jim Wright, recently went to the, Mar the Maryland state legislature and complained about some bakery that was selling gingerbread cookies of little boys and little girls whose anatomy was displayed in these cookies. And predictably, the cookie source sales soared after the moral majority attack on these cookies, and evidently the legislators are still laughing in Maryland about that. Not quite as funny is the head of the moral majority in New York, a Reverend Dan Four was recently caught with his foot in the mouth in an interview with the New York Times. First of all, he told the Times that the Jews have God-given ability to make money. They control the media, they control the city. When the Jewish reporter who was interviewing him mentioned that Jews had been subject to inquisitions throughout the centuries and that the anti-Semitism in the moral majority was feeding into this, he said that, the head of the moral majority said that, well, there was never any Christian persecution of Jews, and the, um, moral, the reporter Joe Klein in the New York Times re reminded him of the Spanish Inquisition and its persecution of Jews. Here's what the moral majority said. Well, those weren't Christians. They were Roman Catholics. <laughs> strange uh, distinction. <laughs> and then, last but not least, the head of the Santa Clara County chapter of the Moral Majority opined to reporters that capital punishment would be in line with Bible dictates and appropriate treatment for homosexuality. Now, it's true that the Moral Majority has been criticized recently in the media, and it's also argued that the kiss of death in a political election is moral majority support. We've seen two elections recently in Austin on housing discrimination for, and the school board where the moral majority got heavily involved in this and the opponents were able to mobilize opposition to this moral majority attempt to legislate its morality and was able to defeat moral majority initiatives. Moreover, the moral majority television programs are getting more and more in debt and I read in broadcasting that their viewing audience has gone down about 16%. Now, you would think that the moral majority would be on the defensive and in a retreat, but in fact, Jerry Falwell is exploiting these attacks on the moral majority to try to raise more money. Every month, he sends out a new fundraising letter saying that they're about to go bankrupt and that they will be destroyed by their enemies unless you dig into your pockets and send the moral majority some more money. So as a result of this, Whereas last year they were only able to raise $2 million, they've already in the last 12 months been able to raise $5.7 million. And I've been increasingly successful with these crisis campaigns to raise money and to play on the sympathies of their supporters that the moral majority is a beleaguered oppositional group that's being attacked by all these liberals and humanists, etc. So we're far from having heard the last 
of the moral majority, unfortunately. This concludes the second in our three-part series on covert action, featuring John Stockwell, former CIA official, and Lewis Wolf, co-editor of Covert Action Information Bulletin. Alternative Views is a production of the Alternative Information Network, P.O. Box 7279, Austin, Texas, 78712. If you'd like to write to us, 